Hey everyone, it's Teddy, aka James Kazow on MTGO, coming back for your round two of competitive testing with Grixis Control. Last time I was playing with Court of Lock Thwain, which is a super fun card, but it is hard to stick and really play with when you're coming from behind, so I thought it was time to bring back an old favorite, Soren the Mirthless. It has a plus one that can generate card advantage without drawing cards, which is super nice in the Bowmaster world. And it has a minus two that can create a pretty substantial body to two, three with flying and lifelink, which is kind of like Vampire Nighthawk, just uh, minus the death touch, but that's okay. And then it's got a minus seven that can dome for 13, which is really nice for closing out games if you're just nickel and diming your opponent's life total with Baleful Strix beats or Orcish Bowmaster pings. So yeah, we're going to be trying Soren again. Super excited to play with the card. It's gotten me lots of success in the past, and I'm excited to jam again. Other than that, the list is more or less the same as last time. Went down Fatal Push, bringing in Spell Pierce. I just like the card a lot, and it can it's the best tool for a lot of jobs. Being one mana is really nice, and non-creature spell is a lot of things in Legacy. Uh, still rocking the Molten Collapse. This card has really proven itself in the past couple weeks that I've been playing with it. Having the Dread Boar is super nice, and then also being able to destroy a non-creature non-land permanent with mana value one or less is also super flexible. And if you get both modes, then you're just feeling great. Uh, 19 lands versus 20 last time. I uh, didn't really feel the stability that I thought 20 lands was going to give me, so I think I'm just going to rock with 19 again to marginally improve our top decks. And then everything else is pretty much the same. Cling to Dust, you know it, you love it. It's one of my favorite cards. Same with Nimble Obstructionist, Narset, Meltdown. Sudden Edict is the only other card that maybe you don't see as much anymore, but against the Delver and other decks that are trying to play a threat and then also protect it with permission, there's really nothing better than Sudden Edict. Having the split second ability is very powerful. Can't think of much else to add here. It's pretty much just the Grixis control I've been playing for years now, just slowly updated, and I hope to get a good result with this. And yeah, uh, I think it'll be a fun league. Let's get to it. All right, welcome to the video, everyone. Just drove back from Portland, feeling a little loose, and I um, was trying to return some stuff to someone. I won't tell who, but let's just say uh, they're a very important Sith Lord. Um, six card mulligan. I'm going to keep this hand that has Brainstorm, Bowmasters, and Cling to Dust. They're milling to five, though, so we could just be dead. Unless it's oops all spells and they have to pass the turn to make another land drop to cast their spy and then we can catch their uh, um, dread return with a cling to dust, we'll see. Or if it's reanimator that goes like um, faithless looting pass. Ooh, ley line of sanctity. Could be something interesting here. And they're just going to pass through their turn, okay. Something's afoot, and I'm glad I have Cling to Dust. And I have the fourth land for Jace now as well, so that's cool. Okay, it does look like Oops, I think. Is this something Oops does? Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Balustrade Spy. Okay, cool. I think we got him. They have no more cards in hand. This, this is unprotected. There are the four Narcomibas, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, as they were. I see a Dread Return. I see Bridge from below. Uh, two Dread Returns? What the hell? I see one Thassa's Oracle. Only one, so that's what we're going after. I feel like Badlands is more misleading. Uh, 
All right, well, the game's going on. They might just um, do some cabal therapying to get some information. Either that or I've just completely um, missed something. I see a lot of ley lines. So they're going for that turn one goodness. Yeah, they do hit on Bowmasters. That's funny. But yeah, I'm not seeing, like... What's that card? Um, Memory's Journey? Because if they had Memory's Journey, they would have just shuffled in their Thassa's Oracle. And probably a couple Lotus Petals. I'm going to yield. No secrets. Dread Return targeting Balustrade Spy. Oh, they're getting more info. Okay. Yeah, check it out. Nothing too out of the ordinary for me. Undercity Informer. Lightning Bolt. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I was like furiously scanning this pile because I, I, I was prepared to be incredibly um, embarrassed, but because I couldn't find anything that would have resulted in our loss. And it turns out I was right. All right, oops, all spells. Let's get Opposition Agent. Wait, was there even... I don't know if they have room for a um, Summoner's Pact when they had all that stuff. I should have been paying a little more attention, but I was just like scanning for scary cards. All the permission in the world, please. Thoughtseize, Surgical Extraction, Pyroblast. Maybe one or two of those. Meltdown doesn't really help, even though they have Chromox. Well, maybe it's better than... Let's see what we want to take out. Take out Edict. Take out Collapse. Take out Plague Engineer. Take out Jason Soren. We got Bowmasters to win the game with if they don't die to their own deck. I want Lightning Bolt because Xanted Swarm is a real thing. It, it exists. K-Command... Don't really need it, but it can come handy in a pinch if we need them to like discard on their draw step, if we've ground them out. Mm, also, I don't really want to cut any more blue cards. I want as many blue cards as possible. So maybe I cut on the draw, maybe both K-Command. And I guess Opposition Agent. Two forces, a little scary against Cabal Therapy. And they're keeping seven. I mean, I have two forces. I'm not going to throw it back. And Pyroblast to hit a Pact of Negation. I'm not going to have time, it seems. Okay, slow start over there. Unsurprisingly, we are losing Force of Will. And we're drawing Force of Will. So as long as we don't get hit with Cabal Therapy here, I'll just force it anyways, then... Yeah, see what happens. Hmm. A little tempting to brainstorm, but I'm not going to. The good old Thought Seize bug. Oh, they take Snap this time. And then nothing. Maybe they're afraid of the 2-1 beats. That is actually a very real way to win. Um, I'm not going to drop the Strix in just yet. I will probably brainstorm at the end of turn. Dark Ritual, okay. Cabal Ritual. Balustrade Spy. Force. Hmm. Yeah, I'll get Badlands. So unfortunately I gotta do this. I can't let the Pact resolve because I can't Pyroblast Balustrade Spy, of course. 
Hmm, okay. I'll take it. No bad draws, as they say. Yep. Now it's a little scarier to brainstorm at the end of turn, because I cracked my fetch land. So I won't. All four forces. Not bad. It would be nice to drop into Bowmasters at this junction, but it's, uh... Well, I don't have one. Okay, they have another land. That's kind of scary. Brazen Borrower. Yeah, let's look for that land. Ugh. I mean, it's not... I mean, I'm, I'm being a little ungrateful. It's all good stuff. It's just like... You know... So let's thought seize them next turn. I want to hold up cling to dust and both forces, but that means I can't make a land drop either. I think that's fine. Weird. I don't think they're getting through this though. Not without like a silence effect. Pedal. Oh, Xantid Swarm, I told you. Card's very real. What's on top of my deck? Thought Seize. Do I have to force this? Oh, this sucks. Mm. There's just no answer on the horizon. I could bounce it. I could bounce it. Draw a card off Cling to Dust. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to actually pitch Flusterstorm. Then hopefully this Thought Seize will just really bridge the gap here. Yep. So now they're uh, a ways off. Even if they draw another Informer, they're missing the mana, and then they'll need two more mana. Obviously that happens really quick with Rituals, but... Um, yeah. I think we're safe for a little bit. I wish that I had fetched a little differently. I was thinking about Volcanic Island, but it just didn't seem responsible. No bad draws. Okay, that was kind of a bad draw. Although it does let me start cantripping off Cling to Dust. So let's do that. I don't know if it really matters what I hit here. Ponder. Red Blast. Okay, cool. Should be in action here. So we got Force and then a Red Blast on a Pact of Negation as our lines of defense. Chrome Mox, yep. Pitching a Narc Amoeba. So there is a world if they go off with Undercity Informer, I could Red Blast a Narc Amoeba and they'd only have... Oh no, I'd still be three creatures. Ah, ignore me. Okay, um, let's pick up that ponder. This is our new pitch. Hardcast Force of Will is also not ridiculous, but it's just going to be so much better to cast this and start clocking. while we're in this weird dead stall. Lightning Bolt. Well, now that one Xantid Swarm is gone and they're still not presenting any green mana, that'll probably just be a turn off the clock. Here we go. Round two. Undercity Informer. Yeah, I fight over this. Don't want their graveyard in their 
or don't want their deck in their graveyard. But if it ends up there, um, you know, we'll do what we have to. Okay, it won't. But next time, next time could be scary. Although we do have, still have that cling to dust. Bowmasters. Okay, this takes a turn off the clock. But just one, I think, right? We get him dead next turn. Alright, hold tight, everyone. Looking good. Here come these two. No reason not to bolt now. Very good. This would have been a little more complicated with a um, Ley Line of Sanctity, so it's cool they didn't have that this time. They kept seven, and was, I think they were hoping on Thoughtseize to get the job done, but uh, as long as you stick to the maxim of not just keeping a hand with one piece of interaction, but multiple, two this time in that case, in this uh, example, then I think that's a sound strategy against Oops. Sometimes they'll just get you, though, but not this time. All right, round two against an 80-card deck. That can only really mean one thing, and I guess this is as good a time as any to unveil my new strategy against um, Yorion, blue Yorion piles, which is to play really bad Delver against them. I'll show you more, more of what that means after uh, when we get to sideboarding. Not saying it's a great strategy, but it's kind of what I got since these decks go over the top of us and uh, we aim to be the control deck in a meta full of aggressive decks. But this hand is pretty darn good. We might get there. I like dropping Strix first. It's innocuous enough that the 1-1 the beats just never really, they never really care about it and then adds up over time. Another Strix, beautiful. Might just bolt them at the end of turn, we'll see. Gotta buy you over there, in case you couldn't see it's too shiny. I'm practically blinded over here. Bet you didn't think you'd face a burn today. You know what, I might not drop the Strix anymore. They got like, Bowmaster energy over there. Is it five color mayhem? With 80 cards in your deck, you might as well play every color, right? It might be double queuing mayhem. Just kidding. That was a little rude. I'm sorry. It's hard to tell sometimes, though. Like, what could they really be tanking about on my upkeep? Maybe it's Yorion Storm? Maybe they're going to add Nauseam right now off of a couple rituals. Okay. Um, let's do that. Might see a Bowmaster in response. And then Begun the Bowmaster Mirror has... Has. <clears throat> yeah, Begun the Bowmaster Mirror has. I have the Star Wars on the brain today for some reason. See, now this is really good for us, because now they're just going to be, like, pinging us. They maybe clocked us for a hyper-aggressive deck with that Lightning Bolt on turn one. Grixis Burn, you know, very common deck. And now that they have basically used their Bowmaster just to deal one, the fact that our Bowmaster might do some serious shit is, uh, well, it's really good, frankly. And even though they have swords, I think I'd still rather take the Brainstorm. Just strand them with this rather uninspiring hand. I can see why they fired in their Bowmasters, though, because if I took Bowmasters, they'd really kind of be without action over there. This is a hand we can beat. I wish I could get them to... Um, oh, they hit Ponder. That is not great. Um, 
I want them to swords my Strix, if at all possible. At the same time, though, I don't know if I can pass up uh, answering their Bowmaster with my Bowmaster. It just seems too good to pass up. Having this bolt held back. Okay, they don't shuffle. They play Pluto Delta. They crack it. They get an underground C, so they don't have white up this cycle. Is this up the beanstalk? Oh, it's life from the loam. Holy cow. Yeah. Fascinating. So uh, I'm assuming they're also an Uro deck. So if I don't draw a land, I really want a Strix to try and hit my land drop. I think this is just right. I don't love it, but I think this is correct. Their hand is four lands and a source to plowshares. Oh, and I hit the land anyways, of course. If I hit another land, though, and just slam Sorin, look at that. They'll have to come up with, like, Spell Pierce, I guess. They don't dredge. Not that surprising. I'm kind of hoping they just put Yorion in hand and pass. Teferi. Okay. My Planeswalker is better. Well, that's not really true. It's just different. So their hand is three lands and a swords. I think I just gotta play Soren here. Whenever I see Loam, I'm always cognizant of Wasteland as well. They really want to answer this guy on the stack. Cling to dust. Cool. Put a point on Teferi. Try and keep that under control. They can in turn put a point on Sorin. But they're going to have to find their engine really soon. And I want this Teferi gone eventually. Mystic Sanctuary for Brainstorm. Okay. They're going to bounce my Strix. Not really a winning proposition. Then Brainstorm. It's a lot of card advantage. When you have life from the loam, putting away lands you don't want. I assume they're like furiously digging for a Leyline Binding. And being able to ideally pick off Teferi with Orcish Bowmasters is something I'd like to do. Uro. Got Cling to Dust for that. They're going to dredge with their Uro trigger. There's the savanna, so their hand is loam, swords. Well, now their hand is like, what, three lands, a swords, and two unknowns. Their draw step and their Teferi activation being the unknown. Bad lands, okay. 
Colgon's command. Kind of hurts to take three there. Alright, we're in there with that. That's nice. See if I can get rid of this Uro. Hehe, <laughs> yeah. And then let's drop Strix back in. Alright, I feel like I'm crushing on board. They have two more cards than me in hand, though. And a lot of mana. So we could see something really scary like Minsk and Boo this turn. No dredge there. Going to combat. Swinging. This is what Strix was made for. Another Uro. So they can bypass giving me a, a Bowmaster trigger if they choose to dredge loam. They're going to take a draw. And they didn't swords because they want to escape Uro this turn as well. That is pretty annoying, not going to lie. I do have another Strix to check Uro, and also Narset, but since they have Swords to Plowshares, I don't know. There's just a lot of things going on now that they can kind of just choose to ignore. I assume they're going to leave Loam, yeah. That'll help fuel their Uro. Take another draw, sure. Army's getting bigger. They have an insane amount of mana. Ideally, they don't leyline binding my sore in this turn. Wasteland, sure. Knew that was coming. And they're doing something. Yep. Uh-huh. Taking me off double blue. Pretty annoying. Back on double blue. Brainstorm. Sure, I'll take it. Do I just play Narset here? I'm pretty sure I do. Although they did just spend the swords. Hmm. Yeah, that wasteland was timely, because now I don't have triple blue to play Narset and Strix. With that in mind, I suppose I should brainstorm, see if I find a removal spell. Force of Will, that'll also do. I think K-Command can go. And one of these Brainstorms, too. And if they dedicate a lot of their time and energy to a, um, like, a Wasteland train, I'm not too sad about that, because that means they're not getting natural draws, either. Another Force, okay. That's cool. Now I feel like I might actually be able to defend. Did they draw Terminus? Oh, there's a pause on the draw step because of the life from the loam. Of course. Another loam? It's going to attack. It's 
it's kind of cool to see them dredge all those swords to plowshares away. I'm not going to lie. Don't mind seeing that happen. I'll make them think about uh, Red Blast, I guess. I don't know. Okay, it's gone. They must have a lot of lands in hand, right? I should have been keeping track better. And if I force it once, then they won't be able to fire it again, because they'll be out of green mana. And ideally, cards in graveyard. I think one of the cards in their hand is also Loam, right? There were two at one point. And yeah, they didn't dredge one away or anything. Force that. Okay, it's gone. Yori on to hand, sure. Almost in range for Soren to deal 13. Bowmasters, okay. Not awful. I think I probably have to cling Uro right now, though. Although, is playing Narset just better? It might be. I still have force. Well, let's attack first. No argument there. Yeah, let's play Narset. This also might make it harder for them to successfully fill their graveyard up. Although they have Loam. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Shielder's Edict. Sure. If they can add one more card to their bin, I think they have a fetch land. I forced last turn and they didn't fight over it. Maybe they're just not in the business of fighting over a card that you can just uh, cast again immediately. Hopefully they just have a bunch of cantrips. And if I can't punish them or outright turn them off with Narset, maybe I can just load on the hurt with Bowmasters. Oh, something's happening. Could be fourth Aerolingus. Oh, maybe not. Maybe just filling up the graveyard. Lemming back a wasteland, sure. Surely they can't mean to dredge away that loam. Or no, they still have another one, right? So their hand is like wasteland, Yorion, um, loam, and then three unknowns. Hopefully not force blue card. Nice. And since they limb, they can't drop uh, Yorion in. So yeah, let's just see if that turn one crazy bolt to the face pays off here. And I guess I should get Volcanic Island so they can't waste me off red immediately. Kapow. Yep, it's good enough for them. Cool. Taking game one is very good, especially when we're so far ahead on clock. So, like I said, uh, I was actually expecting to lose that game, because I usually lose game one against this deck, but we didn't. So, normally I would, like, cut just pretty much anything expensive or doesn't, like, deal damage very effectively, like Plague Engineer, um, 
Molten Collapse, Shielder's Edict, and just like pedal the metal, throw bolts at them. But since we're on the draw, I'm going to cut a land, bring in from the Catacombs, just grind them out. A little counterintuitive to both cut a land and bring in a 5 drop, but these games will go long. You will have 5 mana, and they will not have days unless they're a complete um, uh, sicko. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways, let's cut, or let's bring in Spell Pierce, because I think they have from the Beanstalk. I saw a Leyline Binding, unless that's just like accepted as the best removal spell these days since people are running five colors anyways but you kind of need triumphs to turn them on let's get red blast and then surgical because uro you saw how much of a pain that card is if i didn't have something like soren inflating my car my hand size it would have been a real problem cut plague engineer on the draw let's go down on forces we'll bring him back on the play and be hyper aggressive cut a lightning bolt what else edict and then probably Brazen Borrower. Your 3-1 beater is not really going to get through against the uh, deck that is um, playing Bowmasters and uh, Swords to Plowshares and stuff. I will keep Nimble Destructionist, though, because you can get some really cool tempo blowouts with that card. Yeah, it's functional. Our aim is to not mulligan here. Underground Sea, go. Hmm. Okay. Red Blast. I'll Red Blast just about anything right now. Holding up Bug. Ooh, up the Beanstalk. That is annoying. Can I force it? No. Alright. Let's put back a... Let's shuffle away K command and then just also let's hang on to both red blasts. And then we'll fetch next turn, play Baleful Strix. Start the clock. And another surgical. You don't usually want to see two. You definitely want the one because of um Uro being such a beating. But now I guess we can do some kind of funky stuff. Some irresponsible lines, I mean, since Surgical Extraction is a pretty pretty dicey card. Another up the beanstalk, good lord. Yeah, this could get bad. Sure. It would be funny to extract wastelands from here. I mean, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then on their upkeep, I guess I'll exile, extract force negation. That's pretty funny. I guess on their draw step. Are they really running more than three? I mean, probably. This is so goofy. Yeah, I guess I probably should have extract. Yeah, what am I doing? I'm going nuts, huh? Because they could have forced that. That might tell them a little bit about what I have in my hand, though. I don't care if they draw force a will and force this play. Do I? Do I? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess... No, yeah, I want the info as well. Not that I'll get the info if what happens, like I outlined happens, but, you know. Uh-huh. They drew fourth. Yikes. I mean, they have no way to cast it, but that's still scary. It will be scary. And quick peek at their deck. Looks like your standard insane value pile. Oh no, not Baleful Strix. Okay, this is going to become multi-turn then. Um, yeah. Definitely want to hold up Red Blast before, though. Just make sure they don't cantrip out of this. They're going to combat. Let's do that. Be cognizant of the clock, of course. Ooh. Don't like that. Now they can red blast my Strix. Ah, <laughs> oh, dang. This is so silly. Oh, it's so silly. I guess I'll cantrip. Nice. Just two more lands. All right, uh, don't draw a white source, I guess. And now that I can still hold up Red Blast, I guess I'd just make them trade Red Blast for Strix. Yuri on to hand, that's gonna be a big problem if I can't Red Blast it. Bowmasters, that's nice. That's a much better play than just running my, my shit into a red blast. They can bully me into this attack, though, if they drew, like, a land that's not white. No, okay. Here come the boys. All right, one land away. Don't have to worry about getting wastelanded either. I mean, would I rather have a um, flusterstorm in this position? Yeah, of course. All right, one unknown for them in hand. I'm so scared. That fourth is just gonna really make things hard. But so far, so good. Nimble. Well, I guess we can stop them from getting the monarchy. We'll just be two, two twos. I'll have trample, which is a big problem. Normally, um, it would be really difficult to stop multiple monarchy triggers. But the way fourth is worded, it just becomes one monarchy trigger whenever one or more creatures. Uh, so let's draw a card here. I'm going to leave that thought season there too. And that's my last edict. I only brought in one. Um, yeah, oh, I'm gonna, I can hit Badlands, there we go. Okay, cool. Do we just do this? I mean, it's kind of risky. I really want to hold up Red Blast. Okay, that's better. Much better. Oops. Weird scenario where I definitely just make this blocker as well. Being able to block the 
two two horses is really good. If I ever draw another land, then I can probably from the catacombs. Dress down. Okay. I think I'm okay with this, right? Means I can't really get fourthed. Another up the beanstalk. So I could destroy dress down in response. And just using my mana sounds pretty good. Oh, wait, no, I can't. I can't get red off this because they destroyed one of my bad lands. Yeah, that was um, a huge punt. Like, if they did play some Yorion stuff this turn, that would be a real catastrophe. Here's a Ponder, so they'll probably have white mana next turn. Gotta be prepared for that. There it is. Doing something right now. Leyline binding. Draw three. Who are they going after? Soren. Narset. Hmm. That's tough. It's hard to know what the best line is, but it's probably just hold up double red blast obstructionist, right? Nah, it's probably play Narset, right? Hold up double red blast. Oh, they have Red Blast. Another one, that is. Okay. It's a little scary, but having Bowmasters makes me feel better. Okay. Say no to that. I guess I'll say no to that too. In the business of saying no right now, I guess. Do I ponder, or do I just from the catacombs? Which would let me ponder, if it resolves. I want to have Bowmasters. Having Bowmasters seems important. Nice. Now I just kind of need to get to the trap, which I think I'll be able to do. And if I can ponder into a force of will, I only cut two. That would be Muy Bueno. Let me just start attacking now. Just put them to five. All right. And they're kind of choked on white, too. This 
so they're in a bit of a situation here. They might just like play um what's it called? Uh fourth aerolingus and not attack. Army's getting big too. And I imagine they just have to leyline bind this orc. Right? Now I have a flying attacker that's lethal. A lot of things seem to be going my way. They could play Bowmasters. Oh wait, no, yeah. That does not deal with the Vampire. They could play Yorion to block, but that would leave them dead on the ground, maybe? Solitude? Solitude would help. Sanctuary, not white mana. That's cool. Okay, there's swords. Yorion. Draw three. Draw a lot, actually. If they do flicker all this stuff. But then if they don't have like, you know, um, a uh, counter spell after all this, and it would need to be force of will. Should be able to get to the trap in time. We'll see. Could also just draw a lightning bolt. Forge. Lorian revealed. Yep. Alright. Guess we're just hanging tight. I mean, we're probably dead. So close. I wonder if I missed a damage anywhere. But I think I put all my Bowmaster triggers on him. I wonder if they'll play around Flusterstorm. They're going to play Leyline Binding. All right, they either have their own fluster storm or they're playing around days, I guess. Something. Oh man, I feel like there was a weird way to win this. I'm not sure what it was, but there you have it. And yeah, maybe I was supposed to. I don't like my mana was so tied up the whole game. I don't think there was a point where I could have cast this again or cast Nimble Obstructionist. I don't know. That was tough. Maybe I wasn't supposed to play Soren. Maybe I was just supposed to start the initiative right away. Who knows? But given that they have so little clock, I mean, I guess I was going to bring in my forces anyways. Okay. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, their clock is pretty low for their kind of deck. It's under six, but over five. We can cut Jace. They're on Pyroblast, so I actually don't want Narset anymore either. And I think we can cut a K Command. Just kind of really start looking like Bad Delver. Molten Collapse is interesting as well. It's a little slow for what we want. Might want to trade that out for a Fluster Storm. Just really work on protecting our threats and getting over the line. Hydro Blast is also a little narrow. We're even playing 18 lands like Delver. Great. Keeping 7 over there. Probably just going to go for a... Um, Got a basic island with this Lorien revealed this turn. So far, so good. I'll get Volcanic Island. Round it out. Snapcaster Mage. Now there's a lot of tension between firing the first Bowmaster here and not. Zeatora's Proving Ground. It's the Jun Triome. Carpet of Flowers. Hmm. Sure. They just put Yorion in hand here, that's pretty good. Uro. Start the beats, I guess. Ooh, and they have Wasteland. Flusterstorm. Well, it's Brainstorm. Oh, no! Oh, man, no! You're kidding me. This is a lot of Lightning Bolts. Well, it's an 80 card deck. How likely are they to have yet more wastelands? Ugh. Also, not good for their carpet. Swords. Hmm. Can I afford to red blast this? I don't think so. Got a red blast Uro and then fluster when they inevitably fight back. But I guess I should probably bolt. Got a two power creature. It's not nothing. Hmm, it's not a shuffle. Hmm, they didn't want to fight over that. I suppose I'm not surprised. Alright, there's got to be a land after this, right? I mean, there's a Kolagon's Command, and then hopefully a land.
Uro, counter saw, force a will. Hopefully they don't have another one. Fluster that. Can't fluster Uro, of course. Great. I love it. So I should play Strix here. Okay. Now I can snap Lightning Bolt. Kind of cool. I can K Command. See what happens. And it's not an island. Ponder. Might be looking for Terminus or something. If I can just get two more points of damage across. I have the burn to do this. But if they gain life with Uro, that's a problem. They don't shuffle. I need you to not gain life and not draw cards. Nimble. Okay. I could stifle Uro's like life gain, I guess. Or I could throw in a 3 1, that's good too. It's all good stuff. Whoa, damage went across. Wow, okay. Was not really expecting that. Leyline binding. Yeah, I think this might have been a little greedy. I don't know if you can really afford to take that damage when you're at such a low life total, but I could also be full of shit and they could like cast healing salve or something. I'm going to not stifle that. Making blue over there. Fourth. I think this is fine. Since they only have two cards in hand though, I think I'm going to snap bolt right now yeah I think that's right okay there's the force bolt now they need like solitude wait they can't even have solitude Got him. All right. 2-0, baby. All right, here we go. Round number three. Unfortunately, we're taking a mulligan off the bat, and they're keeping seven. Hmm. Well, Brainstorm can fix any hand, right? Ship the Soren. Let's see what happens. Got to shake off that last match. It was uh, quite grueling, but ultimately very rewarding, I think. I'm glad I was able to get Beanstalk Yorion Pile on camera. Thought sees me. Yeah, go for it. Probably going to lose Brainstorm. If they take Narset, they might be on Doomsday. Although they also might be afraid of Lightning Bolt. They did take Narset. Okay. I'm sensing Doomsday. And Edict is not a great draw against Doomsday. Conversely, maybe the game's going to go long and they took Narset. Or maybe they're Bowmasters and they want to try and get me. Ah, oh, this again. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm so tired of up the beanstalk. It did just get banned in modern. I feel like I'm in purgatory a little bit. Um, I think this is probably the Pokemoki list. 
underground sea tropical island beanstalk. So, um, yeah, I'll hang on to the edict because they'll probably be looking to end with uh, Merc Tide. Ship K command. The fact that we took a mulligan though is um, not good. Can usually even such a small thing like that can kind of spell doom for this matchup. We knew that was coming. Huh. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think I'll ponder again right now. Jace. I have my doubts that it will resolve or be useful. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll shuffle. Narset. It's the card they didn't want me to have. Of course, now their force wills are at parity. If they go Leovold, which I think Pokemoki's been running, Shieldred's Edict is probably the best answer for Leovold. But they seem to just be passing here. Maybe they have Bowmasters. And Soren is back too. All right. Well, I don't want to drop Narset and just lose it to a bunch of orcs. Not to mention they might have a daze or something. Yeah, tricky spot. Sure. No shuffle. Fetch, so they wanted one card, but none of the other ones. The power of fetch lands. More beanstalks. That is pretty wild. I don't like it. Cantrip. before their force of wills are just even less than free. So in a weird world, Narset is the card that kind of needs to resolve here more than Soren, just because the value is out of control. They miss a land drop. Don't know how to take that. Since it's really the free spells that are going to jack us up. Okay, I have two ways to punish these now. Let's just hang back. If we stare at each other for another turn, I can just cling to dust. Might have been be wise to do that before their main phase. No, there it goes. Because now they can Merc Tide maybe and make it a 4-4 and not just a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, they're missing one card actually. If they play a land, they can Merc Tide. Draw two, wow. Holy cow, I'm having deja vu. Guess we'll do this again, huh? Stifle, nasty. Bowmaster. Free Force of Will. You'll love it. It's 
So I guess I'll go for Narset. Hopefully they don't have another force. If they do, um, well, that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? And they're still not playing a land. Nimble. Could be good. Well, there's a good bit of good news, huh? Um, I'm pretty sure I take K Command here. Try and get the Bowmaster back. Among other things, I think that means they don't have Force of Will, right? Now I gotta protect Narset at all costs. Okay, they must have drawn that for turn. If they show me white mana here, I'm I'm gonna be scared. Okay, cool. Not white mana. They could Shieldred's Edict and then cast Murktide and totally bury me. A lot of things could go wrong, but if I can somehow protect Narset, I'll be feeling pretty good. Speaking of protecting Narset, I probably just want to leave it on three and not as Kanta again, unless I know the coast is insanely clear. All right, so their Murktide does not draw them uh, three cards, which is good. Land is not bad. Hmm. Although I could force and look for, I mean, I could Narset and look for force backup. I do need to try and edict this. And if they didn't force Narset, do they really have a force? They could have uh, Bowmasters. And then I could have her hang on at one by bolting one. See, so yeah, let's try this. It's really the only line, I think. Oh, okay. What a pleasant surprise. But yeah, I'm not going to walk into this. Cool. They pitched one to a force. I don't know if they're on three or four Merc Tides. They're paralyzed. Excellent. Brainstorm. Could be dangerous. I do have Lightning Bolt. If I draw another land, I think playing Soren is a pretty nifty line. If nothing happens, just a K command for Bowmasters is cool. Okay, there's that. Pinging Narset, yep. Let's go ahead and do this right now. Island cycling in response, sure. And then it happens. Okay. Cool, cool. If I can, I'd like to keep her at two. Okay. Don't mind the land either. So yeah, let's just not commit Soren just yet. 
still feeling pretty head on board despite them having three nasty enchantments. Brainstorm, that is a-okay. Gotta put two cards back. So they're going down one card in hand by doing this, which is pretty cool. They must have Lorien revealed. No, they don't. That is also cool. Shieldred's Edict. Okay. Well, we knew this day would come, but we got them down to two cards in hand, which is good. I wonder if I should try and fight over this, though. Seems kind of important. Brainstorm? Yeah! If their last card is Force, for example, we could at least get them empty, and then we just gotta somehow beat three up the Beanstalks. <laughs> could be hard. Could be easy. Hmm. Am I more likely to cast... I'm um, less likely. I'm zero chance to cast Soren, so let's do that. Force Saw. Cool. Here come the boys. Fatal push, okay. I can live with that. Especially when my man Soren's around. Picking up a ponder. Take that force of will, yes please. Alright, they have one more land than us. We have two more planeswalkers than them. This is more kind of like a static enchantment at this point though, not really accruing more value. They're doing a setup ponder over there. But Soren should be able to do some pretty cool stuff. Ooh, they don't shuffle. So there's something on top of their deck that they really want. It could be Bowmasters. Knew that was there. Swing. They're now in range of Soren just being able to chomp them. Even if they have like an Uro or something, gaining three, I can Bowmaster for one and then do all that cool stuff. Shieldred's Edict. Sacrifices a Planeswalker. I could force this, or I could just sacrifice Soren, keep Narset around. I feel like their last card's not relevant, whatever it is. And also getting to hard cast force is kinda hard to turn down. Okay. Cool. Didn't have to do it. I was kinda hoping that they'd continue to play it out though, because they're down to like thirteen on their clock, and when we're up a game, we could actually really leverage that. But we are on the draw right now, so let's get the red blasts, because Murktide is scary. Let's get from the Catacombs and Plague Engineer. Since they're going to be relying on Shielder's Edict and Fatal Push, Plague Engineer can actually be somewhat of a really sticky threat. And it's often not that way. They're also going to be lacking red blasts, so I'm going to keep Jace and Narset around. I'm on the draw, so I can cut one land just to improve our draw quality a little bit. can trim a Thoughtseize. 
can trim a force or two. And I can probably cut nimble obstruction. It just doesn't really work out the way you want it to. Like if you're just stifling a beanstalk trigger, that's pretty pretty mid. Um, it doesn't work the way you want to with bowmasters either, because then when you cycle, the bowmaster will trigger again. So not really that great. I think that's right. Hmm. Lightning Bolt is also not very helpful, but you do want to be able to take out the Bowmaster when you really need to, and Lightning Bolt is helpful in that regard. But I don't know if it's better than Spell Pierce. And Fluster Storm is pretty good against Fair Ducks as well in winning those counter wars. So I'll take one of those as well and maybe cut Shieldred's Edict. Although I'm really scared of those Leovolds. I'm pretty sure there are Leovolds in the list. Maybe just cut another Lightning Bolt. Okay. Gotta be cognizant of Wasteland as well, even though we didn't see any of that game, I don't think. It does feel good to beat that deck on a mulligan, though. Weird hand, but I really like having Spell Pierce and Bowmasters, and I'm on the draw. I think it's fairly likely we'll be able to hit our land drops. But yeah, weird hand. Are we going to see a carpet here? No, not a carpet. Maybe a Thoughtseize? Yeah, it's a Ponder. From the Catacombs is particularly good at being immune to Thoughtseize, unless you want to start casting it multiple times. No shuffle on that Ponder. And then, in interest of spell piercing I, uh, up the beanstalk and not playing into wasteland, I'm going to play out this basic island here unless I draw a fetch land. Oh, it's Molten Collapse, which might be uncastable. Nah, we're going to hit our land drops. I believe it. Yep, there it is. Nice of them to telegraph, but it's probably because they have Bowmasters. Land. Yeah. Um, yeah, this will be our mountain. And if they play Carpet of Flowers, might even get that sweet Molten Collapse 2 for 1, which you only really usually see in the um, matchups against like Initiative. Bowmasters, sure. Don't want to play into Daze here. Although Stifle was weird. So yeah, let's just fetch. I'll still get the descend trigger if we, um, uh, you know, play the uh, crack our fetch and it gets stifled, but then we won't have any red monitor to cast the spell with, so it's not great. That's it? They're not playing a land. Uh, I think they have days. I'm going to give them a little more credit than just their hand being full of uh, green cards. If they play another Bowmasters, there's some consideration to actually hitting the army token with our Bowmasters right now, so Plague Engineer can get a clean sweep, but usually just taking out the non-token Bowmasters themselves is, is fine. Yeah, there they be. Okay. They're clocking. They're clocking good. It's possible I also petty theft this turn. Okay, that was acceptable to them. Still no land drop over there. So curious. So curious what's going on. All right, one land, please. I'll take more Bowmasters. Really can't have too many of those. I guess Plague Engineer has other uses, like getting brainstormed away. I just really don't want to play into days. It seems so obvious it's what they have. I don't know what else they could have. 
like I just said, I want to give them more credit than just their hand being full of like green cards. Maybe Merktide Regent. I don't know. Maybe Stifle. Maybe Cantrips that they're just hesitant to fire. Holy Lord. Yeah, if I can just hit a land next turn, Plague Engineer seems so appealing. They're on their draw step. Did they draw like Temporal Mastery? <laughs> I think they would have cast it there. Start taking these out. All right. Can I get that? All right, I think they're out of Bowmasters, y'all. How about a land? No. Guess we're just sitting tight. Yep. This isn't so bad because it might embolden them to attack with these. Uh-oh. Okay, cool. We know that's what they drew for turn. Stifle there would have been kind of annoying too, actually. <sighs> It'd be really funny if they didn't even have days after all that. Just so stubborn. If they play up the Beanstalk, I'm actually kind of... I feel like I'd actually... Um, well, I don't know if I would actually. Murder's Cut, sure. I wonder if I can ponder in peace now. Okay, I don't mind that. Peaceful ponder achieved. And holding out on this fetch, I'm rewarded as well now, too, because Scalding Tarn can get Basic Mountain, Bloodstained Mire can get my other Swamp, or maybe I just let them wasteland me and uh so from the catacombs the first room actually has something to get although i don't imagine that's the part of the undercity that's going to be impactful on this game and then brainstorm is pretty important i think i want to try and do that now i don't think they have bow masters and everything else is like kind of not uh what am i trying to say not good Cool, I like Pyroblast as well. So maybe now that I've already I've dealt with so many Bowmasters that I think Plague Engineer is a little clunky, and then maybe Molten Collapse is also not where I want to be. I'll float it on top though, just in case. Because if they just slam down like a Merktide next turn, I might want that. Important to be aware that I'm also at 10 life right now. So a Merktide will pretty much need to be dealt with. They can ponder, that's fine. Turn the Spell Pierce back on. 
Yeah, maybe I will take the Molten Collapse, because that's kind of how they close the game from here. So they play a Trot, but they don't do anything after that. No up the Beanstalk. I'm pretty sure they have Merc Tide in hand. And yeah, we're going to keep playing around Days. If they Wasteland me, that makes my Spell Pierce better. Probably shuffle away that Plague Engineer. Cast Brazen Borrower. This would be a good turn for them to play uh, Merc Tide Regent and... Uh, what's it called? Um, Ponder's Fine. And Carpet of Flowers. Get that Fabled 2 for 1. This seems like Witherbloom Command. They put black green in their pool and then also start thinking about stuff. Oh, wow. They're just done. Maybe they didn't think they could win in under seven minutes. But I think this game was shaping up good for us. They had four cards in hand to our six. We have real grinding potential with Cling to Dust from the Catacombs was probably going to start because I imagine they make a, a bid to really get on board this turn. We have Brazen Borrower in the wings. We... Whatever they do this turn, they go down to three cards in hand at most. And then we deal with whatever they put down and then really present what we've been hanging on to, which is from the Catacombs. Uh, I think we're in good shape to win either this game or the next one where we're on the play. So, yeah. Cool. I like taking down Beanstalk ba decks back-to-back. Uh, -back. Feeling pretty good. Let's keep on rocking. Welcome back for match four. We are undefeated, but we are up against Tony Scaponi. Master of Storm. So I imagine I will want a Force of Will. And a Thought Seize 2, I'll take it. And an Obstructionist, I will take it. I'm probably gonna, yeah, I'm definitely gonna put the uh, K command on bottom here. Even though recently I think he's been on a, um, like an 8 cast style or 8 cast adjacent paradoxical outcome deck. So K Command could be pretty good against a deck like that, but I'd rather have Nimble Obstructionist, I think. And I'll take Force of Will there and the land drop and hope we don't die in Thoughtseize next turn. Thought Seize, Ponder, Double Force. Um, the uh, PO deck is pretty resilient and can draw a lot of cards because they also have like Thought Cast. So I'm actually kind of hoping he's on more of a Storm deck. Urza's Bobble. Okay. It's kind of looking like PO. Urza's Saga. Ooh. Mox Opal. Emery can't have that. Non negotiable. Alright.
One more C and a thought sees. Ooh. This is interesting. I almost want to take Grim Monolith. That will get them a construct. And they can't currently cast Thought Casts. Or wait, yeah, they can. It costs two. Yeah, that's tricky. What am I more afraid of? Probably a construct, right? They can just like burn through their deck. Yeah, I'm gonna take Grim Monolith, I think. And part of me wants to force the thought cast as well. Well, that might be a little silly. I'm drawing a ponder. They drew a bobble. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to force this. Because if they draw soul land and get two constructs, that would be real bad. They're ready to cash those in. Now that they know there's no Bowmasters. Alright, really counting on this, uh, Ponder to do great things. Hmm. I don't mind the edict. And then Baleful Strix can generate some resources. It's all a little medium. But I think it's better than just drawing in the blind. Alrighty. Like, what if I just shuffled and got a red card? That would be rough. What are they going to go for here? A Lotus Petal? Manifold Key. Saga number two, never surprising. Seems like they always find them above rate. Yep. Knew about that one as well. Another one. Pedal and pass. I feel like if they had a one ring, they would have cast it there. If they don't force this or the edict, I guess I have both constructs kind of checked, which is nice. All right. Drawing live next turn. Of course, anything can happen. Drawn up to four cards, it's uh, all a little scary.
Yep. I guess Strix doesn't really check a construct when they have manifold key. P.O. It's a lot of cards. Would have been nice to force that. Or if this Strix was a Bowmaster, is it at least put the herd on pretty good? Although I, I doubt he would have made that play if I did have Bowmasters. Yeah, you know, Force of Will, just not really as good against this deck as other Storm decks. I'm pretty sure they can just go off from here. They drew so many cards. Pyrite Spellbomb, okay. Four cards left. Three and a blue. Is this another PO? Sure is. Nineteen cards. Probably not surviving this one. Monolith back. Another monolith. They must have a ring by now, right? Or a paradox engine, and then another zero. And then they can draw their deck. Dang, they kept the right opal. He's not going to make any mistakes. He invented this deck, and he's one of the best storm pilots alive. Sea Gate Restoration. So he's going to draw 11 cards. And doesn't need to go to discard? That is wild. I can't think of anything that would really win me here other than maybe Nimble Obstructionist, which is an exile, because he'll definitely be able to just brute force anything I try to do with a bunch of Force of Wills. We haven't seen a single one yet. Might even all be in his hand right now. And anything I can do to try and stop this would be counterable. And usually when it, the similar uh, Karn Forge ring deck is at this stage, they're usually at a pretty low life total. But uh, he's at 18 right now, so that's not really an angle we can use. Above everything else, I like being educational, so let's see how this deck just goes completely off. And Tony's a great pilot, so yes, this will be good. Storm count 22. Probably looking for that Aether Flux Reservoir. 
thought monitor, sure. Important to note that a um, Bowmasters wouldn't have prevented this either, because I believe I saw a Pyrite Spell Bomb. Well, that might have been a little later in the chain, definitely after the first PO, but the first PO only drew like four or five cards, I think. There's Spell Bomb again, yep. They'll probably see something that is not not at all going to stop him. Unless somehow the last 15 cards of, their, of, the, of the deck, or even, it'd have to be even deeper than that, because he's drawing up with some bobbles as well. Yeah, it'd have to be pretty, pretty crazy. Like, the last five cards are all Force of Will, and then I draw, like, I don't know. What do I even need here? I honestly don't know. Slow him draw. I can't brainstorm into any Bowmasters. Oh, it's Bowmasters. Should I brainstorm and look for a land drop, or is that just so far gone at this point? I think I need, like, Thoughtseize. Well, there's Force of Will. Okay. Do your worst. Not even going to make a construct. This is going to be a fail to find situation just because there's like nothing left in the deck. I don't know. Candy Trail. It's a cool card that I don't know if it really saw a play before Tony made this deck. I certainly hadn't seen it before, but it's a really cool card. It's a food and a clue. Okay, there's the engine. Might as well give this a shot. Ah, shucks. I didn't actually think that was going to work. But you got to try. You gotta play to your outs. And we finally see the one ring. There's the reservoir. So eventually he'll gain so much life that he can just pay 50 life and hit me for 50. Although a lot of the zeros were already used up, I will say. But yeah, since it's exponential, it's just gonna go real fast here. Transmute artifact. Five cards left in deck. I don't, I guess he could even like um, force his own spells. Thought cast, yep. 29, we're getting there. He's not going to mess up. He's not going to draw his own whole deck. It's impossible. Yeah. I do feel a little smart seeing the line... but not that smart. And there we go. That should bring him to 46. Just one more spell ought to do it. There we go. Oh, his clock is kind of low. I should concede. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> didn't have the chance. 
I mean, there is money on the line. Um, okay, Meltdown, Pyroblast, Spell Pierce. Flusterstorm's interesting because hitting PO does seem kind of important, but at the same time, uh, it doesn't really hit anything else in the deck other than Thought Cast and Force. I guess for those reasons, it's like, would you bring it in to hit a combo piece? And I guess the answer is yeah. So we can definitely cut Plague Engineer. Soren is not the reason for this matchup. Jace is interesting because Jace is really good at fighting combo decks if you survive long enough to cast it and manage to get it in there. Before that, so a little medium, being a four drop and all. I think we can trim a bolt, but we really don't want Emery to get in there. Cling to Dust is a little unimpactful outside of really specific situations. They need to have like an active Emery, which we are already trying to avoid at all costs. So yeah, Cling to Dust can go. I guess I can trim one Fluster. And then Edicts are also interesting. I'll keep one, I think, and then we can maybe trim Brazen Bar, although having Flash Beaters is good. For that reason, I also like Opposition Agent, because they do get Manifold Key offers a Saga, which is a combo piece. But maybe that's just better. Yeah, on the play, I think this is fine. Maybe cut one more Bolt, and then Baleful Strix. Rock like this. And is Thoughtseize just imperative? I think so. Now I'm going to cut the other Edict. I might regret that. Alright. Scary stuff. That's a Meltdown. And a Red Blast. And a Brainstorm. Keeping seven over there, that's scary. Mishra's Bobble. Checking it out. Not gonna fetch. All right, a little bit of a slower start over there. No Saga. Not spewing artifacts. What did they see? Baleful Strix, okay. Um, in the interest of finding Thoughtseize, let's move some stuff around. Colgon's Command is cool. Lightning Bolt, I think I'm gonna send that back since we have a couple Red Blasts and K Command. So, let's also put Strix back. And if there's nothing that needs to be Red Blasted, I can search up land number four with Lorien revealed. Having a protected meltdown seems important. This was one line I was a little worried about. Okay, pedal, and go. Gonna have to definitely build up our red here. It's by far the most important color. Force of will, but nothing to do with it. So, yeah, this could get bad, but We'll do our best. And they're at 17. But yeah, the raw card advantage is going to be pretty hard to overcome if I don't find, like, Narset. Okay, Meltdown has two targets now. Three. 
Paradox Engine. Okay, that is bad. It's now or never on this, really. I wish I had Force back up. Oh, they had the force. No. All right. Now they need to just miss on zero, but that seems pretty unlikely. Ah, shoot. Not good. Well, that should do it. Hard to feel bad about losing to one of the best pilots in the world. Well, let's try and get a four and one, I guess. All right, here's the last match. Just got our trophy run destroyed by Tony Scaponi. Um, I do think that matchup is fine. It wasn't that time though. Uh, this hand is pretty weak. I'm on the draw. They're keeping seven, they're a 60 card deck. Let's just see what happens. I, I like playing as many hands as possible, especially if there's not a trophy on the line. Rainforest. Island. Ponder. Well, this could be pretty much anything. And they're taking a shuffle. Ugh. Yeah, I mean... I'm trying to think of what could have been different. Like, if I had Force for his Force last game, I think it would have been okay. Just destroy that Paradox Engine. The list only runs one. Oh, come on. I already did this twice. I already beat you twice. I don't want to play against this deck again. Um, if I had Force for his Force, or if I had, if I didn't Island Cycle, I don't know. It could have been different, I think. Sure. Jeez, another bean stockpile. That's three in one league. And we're like a five color version. Sure, sure, sure. Force of Will. Let's slam our Narset. They're not holding up black or anything, or even white. So if they 
cast like a leyline binding. They don't have white mana at all, actually. Yeah, let's just try and force this Narset through. Yep. Brainstorm. Hopefully they'll have to just redraw one of those cards off their Beanstalk trigger. Cool. Yep. Possible they find one now, but then... I mean, yeah, another force would not be good. Since it's like one for one. It's all one for one with beans. Great. Uh, I'd rather have another force than another edict. Somehow I have more cards than them in hand. Oh, it's Uro too. You know, it was a pretty grueling league. Bowmasters. Not done punishing your shit. Arrow is pretty annoying though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I just do this now. There's green number two. So their hand is force and something else. Sword, sure. Maybe a blue card? They probably wouldn't have put force on top of their deck and drew it if they didn't have another blue card in hand as well. I don't know. Maybe they're banking on Uro, getting them that blue card. This is, this is going to be pretty elementary. I mean, they just had the answer to the Narset. They had the answer to the Bowmasters. They're getting an Uro. I don't have Cling to Dust. Um, nothing really to see here. Make the play I have, though. Oh, okay. Trust me, he'll be back. Maybe that's why they didn't even do anything about it. How about a cling to dust? Snap. Guess I could hard cast a force on a row. Yeah, this is not looking good. Chillin'. 
Well, I don't want to give them a hard cast force for free. More than just for free. They'll like draw a card too. One more land drop and they can escape Uro and hard cast force. Hard times. Well, they better do something at some point because I'm uh, hitting them for one every turn. I could try and resolve for uh, Lorien Revealed and just force their force. That'd be kind of funny. Nah. Sure. Guess we'll see if their last two cards are Force Blue card. Hmm. I wonder. Could K Command first and then just Petty Theft it. Honestly, kind of the same outcome. If I can just resolve this Lorien Revealed, I might actually have a chance in this. Okay. Well, that's two forces down. As long as they don't engine out too hard. Yep. There was some hesitation there, so I wonder if they have a land, but just didn't want to put it in. Sure. And a ponder. No shuffle. I mean, this is the time to cast a Slorian Revealed, no matter what happens. Another K command. Holy cow. Didn't they... I wonder how many of these they're running. And is that normal? Multiple force and negations? Huh. Yep.
Bowmasters. Well, that resolved. Bowmasters. Gotta be careful not really put anything in their graveyard. So I guess I'll just do this. Trade in armies. You see it happen every once in a while. Okay, this forcible is not going to do anything until Teferi's gone. So I guess I'll just do the same thing as last turn. Play a Bowmasters. Looks like they have a Force of Will or a Lorien revealed at instant speed, so they're gonna draw five cards. Hilarious. Ponder. No point in worrying about uh, them having cards in their graveyard anymore, because, uh, yeah, they already have too many. Oh, let's cast this. Sure. Let's uh, see if they can win. Looks like fourth Aerolingus here. It's definitely the fastest route, considering that they're under 15 on their. We're up like four minutes on our clock, which is nice. This is not lethal though. I'm at 20, and they're leaving up a uh, one mana. It seems.
Here they come. make it seem like I'm playing to win here. If they lose a lot of sleep over this discard decision, no, that's just a rainforest. All right. Then surprise, I don't have anything. They're still going to take time to ley line bind though. That's really interesting. Hopefully we can punish this. Seems like at this point we really just need to take one game. Although, it has to be the next game, obviously. Or else we just lose the match. Cool. We're up like six and a half minutes on our clock. Hopefully that is relevant. We're on the play. Let's just really get after it. Sideboarding, same as last time. I'm going to actually trade Soren for Narset there. Yeah, just cut all the dirtiness. Cool. We'll obviously take the play. Uh, it's not really aggressive enough. <laughs> oh my goodness. I guess I'll keep. Hmm. I guess I send Brainstorm. God, it's so bizarre. I don't think I'm going to win on five, but this double Bowmaster hand might actually do it. A blue card. Man, it's so weird to have just your two land hand be swamp swamp. That almost never happens. If ever. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Okay, it's kind of working. They had to pitch force. They, I mean, they had to force it. Pitching force negation. Obviously, it would have been nice to have a red blast backing that up. Alright, a land would be really great here. Literally any land. Preferably one that is red. Another blue card. Make the same play. Sure. I mean, maybe I should have gone to five, but yeah. gotta say I put a lot of heart and soul into those first three matches and um, I'm a little spent now all right well we got them down to three cards double mulligan them essentially 
Will it matter? We'll see. Might not matter if we can't cast any spells. No shuffle, land number three, sure. Can probably handle Uro. Cling to dust. Thought sees. Surprisingly finding stuff to cast. Show me triple Uro. Hmm. Tough. I think I need to take from the beans up the beanstalk, right? And I'll eventually I'll hit another land. And they don't really have anything aggressive. Hydro Blast trading with Red Blast is annoying. So does that mean I need to take Teferi? They've already used two forces. I could also extract from the beans up the beanstalk. That would be pretty funny. No, I mean no. It's I mean maybe I have Snapcaster Mage for Surgical. What a weird game I found myself in. It's not like I'm really doing anything at not sorcery speed, so... Okay. A lot of hesitation here. Something's happening. Sure. Not sure why you'd do that. It would have been really funny if they just cantripped into one. Alright, well, at least up the beanstalk's not part of this game. So if I can surgically extract Uro and get rid of fourth Aerolingus, then they just have two Bowmasters and an opposition agent to beat me with. Seems weirdly doable. Teferi's a pain though. They don't want to cast it. Strange. Okay. One of these days I'll draw a land. Going upstairs, sure. <laughs> oh, sad. doesn't happen often but I guess it does maybe it was just a really bad keep I'm willing to admit that and there's a row all right basically need to draw a blue source right now Come on. No! All right. Let's... Definitely, I think, probably pretty underrated on lands. Like, we're almost a quarter through the deck. Okay, they just got Mystic Sanctuary. For no reason. But I think they are going to win still.
This will weirdly keep me alive, I guess. They don't shuffle. They hit force number three? No. Probably just some way to deal with it though. Sure. put up with this shit anymore. All right, three and two. Um, I guess showing off a couple Beanstalk matches was pretty sweet though, but yeah, I just didn't really feel like I had any agency in this um, PO matchup, which uh, it, it's po I could review and see that like, I just did not keep good enough hands or just that force of will was pretty clutch when I was moving to destroy Paradox Engine, but yeah, I, that combined, I guess, with some fatigue just really put me out of it for this last Beanstalk matchup, and playing the same matchup over and over again is very good for testing, um, but I guess I uh, just wasn't having that shit today, so uh, this deck is good. I did trophy back-to-back -back with it, and I do want to demonstrate that, but as you know, you know, you can't bend the the universe to your will it's just impossible but maybe next time so yeah hope you all have a great day out there and yeah catch you next time